the full pipeline for what um, what I did for the drone. Yeah. Hey, Steph, what's up? How's it going? <clears throat> All right. You guys ready for this? Um, gonna be do no music today um, because I'm gonna end up posting uh, this replay uh, for people to watch uh, on YouTube. So. Um, yeah, that's why there's just a fan in the background. Yeah, it's a fan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's up? Sora! Dude, what's going on, man? Alright, are you ready? Let's, let's do this. Let's, let's, let's do this. Mike, what's up, man? Hey, oh, look, tablet servers is not available. Well, that's a great way to start. All right. So, um, first and foremost, uh, this was um, so it was not my design. Just to throw that out there to make absolutely clear, um, this whole uh, th project was an exercise in uh, the video game pipeline. So. The original concept was provided by Jerry Perkins. Um, he did an amazing, amazing job. Um, so here's the image um, of his original model. Uh, I think he did it in Fusion 360. Um, and I'll show you guys uh, show you guys the model really quickly uh, from where I was uh, starting. Yo, what's up, Tom? How you doing, man? <clears throat> Dota, Jacob, what's up, dude? All right, so um, it always helps uh, in a project when you have an amazing uh, concept to start from. And uh, we all know Jerry um, Perkins, man. That guy is, he's, he's, got, he's got some skills. Um, so yeah, this is, this is where I started from. So I'll show you the model real quick. So basically what my pipeline was, uh, was taking uh, this model... Uh, breaking it all down um, in ZBrush, uh, remodeling everything in Moto, um, UVing, and then uh, baking in Marmoset Toolbag 3, um, and then Substance Painter for all the textures. Um, so this is just a comparison of side to side. We'll show the final two here mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, actually, no, I'll show this one here yo blah what's up man so this is the final um, turnaround oh snaps <clears throat> this is um, all rendered in Marmoset 3. Hey, uh, Mahishwara. What's up, man? Thanks for the follow. Little wireframe. How you doing, Belial? What's up, man? Thanks for the host, buddy. Appreciate it. Alright, so you guys get the idea. Um, so that was the final product uh, from this particular one. So, uh, basically what I do first and foremost is I always take um, and study the model uh, as, as much as I can. So let me grab, let me grab the high-res model that I was provided. Da -da 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 -da. Somewhere around here. I think this is it. Is this the one? Yeah. So this is the um, original model that I was provided. Um, it's uh, looking at 355,000 polys. Um, so Jerry did a freaking awesome job on this. So it always helps to be able to um, get... Uh, your hands on a really awesome uh, concept to start with, right? Yo, what's up, Leo? How you doing, man? Um, 
so yeah. Um, so the job was to take this and make the actual in-game asset. All right. So basically, what I do, uh, yeah, this is a very Oblivionesque. Oblivionesque. Um, basically, what I do is I'll take and uh, look at the full scope of the project from here um, and decide kind of how I'm going to approach um, creating the low res model first. Um, so in this particular case. Uh, we have a couple of different sections that um, we can break apart um, and think about like the baking uh, pieces, right? So the, my first idea was to take this whole end cap um, and break that off, and that would be one um, one bake, right? So we have the two end caps, uh, and then to do the lenses, the front and the back, separate from the body, All right? And then I could probably just model in this piece, this piece, um, like the major form-defining stuff, right? So I'll probably model in at least this shape. Um, we'll model in these little plugs because they're form-defining on a uh, silhouette. Um, probably model in this piece here uh, so that when we turn it this way, we'll be able to um, be actually see in there. Uh, but most of the other stuff I can bake in, right? So, like, all, all this stuff I can bake in, this stuff I can bake, that I can bake, all this stuff I can bake in. I can even bake in all of this stuff. Um, so, one of the first ideas that I had was I wanted to be able to animate this, right? So, I wanted to be able to show the lens, like, rotating and then coming out. Um, and then, like, the sides being able to rotate, too. So, I wanted to make sure that whatever I modeled, um, I was able to do uh, that. <laughs> That's a, it's okay, man. All good. So, um, let me load the breakup model. I think this is the one. Okay. So, basically, what I did was um, I took it and broke it up into um, the pieces, right? So, I said, all right, this is, this is one piece. Um... This will be another piece. Uh, I'm going to bake these guys separate. Come at me, bros! <laughs> Thanks for the follows. Um, the body will be a bake. Um, this is the dowel that's there. Uh, the back lenses and then the front lenses. So um, once I have the basic ideas of how I want to um, establish my bake uh, groups, then I can go in and start uh, remodeling all of this stuff um, with that in mind. It's super, super helpful to be able to know um, what the rest of your pipeline is going to look like. Um, so you can do UVs, you can do modeling, um, and then you know what you're going to bake and you know what you're going to model. So one of the, um, one of the tricks that I do is... <clears throat> uh, so like if uh, let's go to just the end caps for instance all right so i'm going to turn off colorize so basically what you can do is um you just do like auto groups and it will take all your pieces and make them into separate poly groups um, and then i'll usually do merge similar groups so that um each side is relatively close to the same and then basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to go down to poly paint and do paint from poly groups and basically what that's going to do is just assign uh, a full color to each piece <clears throat> so that when i bake this from an obj guess what i have my material id oh yeah so that's what this whole thing is is this is set up for i just did this uh poly paint from poly groups uh and then just made sure that my poly groups will uh were set Right, so I want to make sure that like all the letters were all in the same poly group. <clears throat> um, you know, all the different materials were in poly groups. So the only thing, the only problem that you're going to run into is that there's only a certain number of colors um, that poly group is going to use. So sometimes you get a duplicate color, um, <clears throat> which ends up weird on the color selection when you're doing um, substance painter stuff. <clears throat> for like auto masking but i'll show you how i got around all that um so it's not a big deal so this is um uh my final bake sets 
All right, and then uh, I took that into Modo. Right, let's jump into Modo. Yeah, I know, right, Tom? Ah, dude. It's like, come on, man. I know we got plenty of colors to play with. Can we just get, I don't know, 256 more? Be awesome. All right, so I'm going to open up Modo. So I used Modo Indie 10.2 uh, for this one. <clears throat> Mm. Yeah, I think it's this one. We're going to see. Wow, that opens. You guys, uh, also, if you have any questions uh, as we're going along, I'm happy to, um, happy to answer questions as well. Okay, so here is um, the final modeled model of the model. <laughs> um, so yeah, so basically what I did was <clears throat> I took and created, well actually, you know what, let me show you the, let me show you the high res first. <laughs> so I took the model into Moto and, ba and broke the high res model up into the same bake groups. Well, a little bit different because I had to get around some Moto stuff. Um, so here's here's the uh, the model in Moto. <clears throat> so then I took the same uh, groups that I was going to bake, and then this is what I was going to model around, right? So we got that, we got the pins, we got the screws, we got the body shape, we got the body pieces. Uh, so basically, um, what uh, what you have to do for Moto Indie is you can only export um, up to 100,000 polys at one time. So I had to break a couple of these smaller ones out um, for the bait groups <clears throat> to kind of get around that. So that's what I was doing there. All right, so... Take a look at the final. All right, so there's this bad boy. All right, so there's the end cap. Let's we'll take a look at these uh, quickly. You get the idea, All right? So I wanted to make sure that I um, I did the form defining pieces, right? So like large pieces like this, pieces like this. Um, I also wanted to make sure that I had enough uh, that this front lens was was tricky uh, in what I wanted to model, um, <clears throat> mostly because uh, a lot of this is silhouette defining. So like if we're at three quarter, right, you really want to have this like high fidelity style um, and be able to see all of that, right? So I know that most of the images like and most of the time that you're going to be seeing this is from the front. So I took a, a little bit of extra time to make sure that I model in some of the major pieces, um, <clears throat> like, <coughs> excuse me, some of those pieces and such. All right. So that's the final. It was uh, 9,800 uh, tries. Well, it was probably a lot, a lot of tries. But triangles, there was 9,800. <laughs> All right. So basically, um, I took this, and uh, actually, let's take a quick peek at the UVs. So I've decided to break it up into two UV sets because um, we were going to do uh, 2048 maps. But because we had such a high fidelity in um, the front, let me show you. All right, such high fidelity for <coughs> small little things like the logo um, and the letters. And um, like the little uh, thumb thingies there. All right, we got another logo over here. Uh, we have small little pieces here. So I wanted to make sure that I had enough um, room in the UVs to be able to catch the, those details. So I decided to break it up into two uh, 
2K maps. This was what it came to. So I did um, drone body and drone lenses. So here's drone body. All right, so basically we're looking at these pieces here. All right, so we got the end cap, we got the body, basically everything but the lenses, because I wanted to have enough fidelity in the UV space. Um, but yes, this is all retopped by hand. Um, right, and then uh, we've got the lenses here. All right, so one of the big things I wanted to make sure is that this centerpiece, um, I wanted to make sure that had enough UV space. <clears throat> yeah, what's up, Luis? Um, to hold uh, the letters. Also, this piece here and this piece here, enough to hold the logos. Oh, I need the coffee. Oh. <clears throat> so, uh, that was the decision for using two d different UV sets. Okay, so once I had that, um, then let's go into Marmoset tool bag. So there you go. That's pretty much it. What do you think? <laughs> um, so this is the uh, this is the final version here. We'll just take it into perspective view. Let's let's turn off. Uh, uh, let's go to perspective. Let's turn off. Uh, shit, where is it? Focus? Yeah, depth of field. There we go. We'll turn off depth of field. <clears throat> so basically what I did uh, was came in and set up all the bakes. <clears throat> Actually, this is not the baking one. Let's save this real quick, and then we'll open up the baking file. Luis, this is the, um, the latest uh, project that I just finished up. Um an exercise in 3D um, video game asset creation. So let's open rendering, baking, let's do baking. <laughs> yeah, it's a Nikon model. <clears throat> okay, so here's how we did. So broken up into those two different uh, UV sets. Right, so we have drone body and drone lenses, which have uh, two different materials as well. So if I'm showing you, um, that don't don't mind all these; these are actually from the high res one. But I have drone body material, so that's all of the body. Um, I have drone lenses material. Thanks, Winspeak. Appreciate it, man. Um, so I have the lenses material, and then I actually uh, added a separate glass material for the lenses, or the actual lens glasses, these ones. Uh, so that way I can just put a simple glass shader on these guys. Uh, this is Moto uh, Indie 10.2, and then this is uh, Marmoset tool bag. Okay, so basically what I did, so I took those two, all right, and then we have bake groups. So if you guys haven't used um, the baking yet in Marmoset tool bag, I highly, highly, highly suggest you take a look at it. It's amazing. I've replaced uh, my whole baking pipeline with Marmoset tool bag three. Um, it's just super, super quality. So basically, what you do is um, you take uh, a baker, right? This is this guy right here, uh, and then in that bake group. Uh, you have your high and your low. So basically, you put your high res uh, uh, FBX or OBJ there, and your low res FBX or OBJ there, and then you hit um, all the parameters that you want, and then you hit bake. That's basically what that is. Uh, Tom, you're using it right now. Nice. So let's. Uh, so I'm going to turn off that, and I'm going to turn off each one of these so I can show you. Um, how I kind of went about it. <clears throat> Alright, so I have the high res, which is turned off. Alright, so this is the high res. Which you can't see because for some reason when you bring in um, an OBJ uh, with poly paint, it doesn't show in the viewport for some reason. I have no idea why. 
but the information is there. So um, what's really awesome is that if you click on the low res mesh here, you can say uh, show offset. Let's turn off skew, right? So the offset is your active cage, right? So you, it'll show you if you're having issues at, at other at one place or another, and then you can paint offsets um, one way or the other, in or out, uh, and you can paint the skews, which is really awesome. So you'll see that I actually used it um, in some of these areas. All right, so some of these areas, I wanted to make sure that um, the normals... Yo, what's up, Ashley? How you doing? <laughs> hey, dude, we're, we're, uh, we're Twitch famous, Ash. <laughs> um, so I wanted to make sure that uh, the baking normals were correct, uh, especially on pieces like this or in here. Um, so what's really cool is I don't have it set up right now, but when you're doing this baking, it actually will give you a live preview of what the bake's going to look like on your mesh. What? So dope. So good. Um, all right. So then that's what I did for basically for each one of these. So I took the end caps. Um, I did uh, these pieces. Um, I did the screws. And I did the body. So we'll take a look at the body. Okay. Um, let's take a look at the high res. All right, so there's the high res. Still no sub button. <laughs> you'll get you'll get there, Ash. You'll get there. <laughs> uh, you can show that very color info, Brenda. Make a material and set the albedo to vertex color. And show it up. What? No way. All right, let me see. Let me try that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the body. So let's turn low. Let's take this guy. Set a new material. Set the surface to albedo to vertex. Tell me that's gonna do it. <laughs> Tom, I love you, man. Freaking awesome. All right, so then, yes, we can do that. So there's my vertex color. <coughs> oh, yeah. That's awesome. Sweet. Learn, you learn things all the time. Sweet. Sweet. That's really cool. All right, so then if I want to, I can go back to my end caps take this same material and put that on my high res on my end caps. Let's turn this on, turn low res on. There we go. So then I get a preview of what my um, vertex normals look like, our vertex colors. Awesome. Tom, dude, bro, dude. All right. So then basically we'll go and um, set up all of my high res and low res cages and everything make sure all the um <laughs> yeah tom's awesome man guys if you um haven't been um haven't checked out tom art um or tomb art uh definitely give him a check out actually uh take check out uh a cubed as well there's actually a lot of guys a lot of guys and girls here that um that do a lot of awesome stuff on twitch You should definitely, definitely check them out. Anyways, uh, so then once you have all of your cages set up and your SKUs and ready all, um, you just go to the baker, um, and then you can set up all your parameters, where it's going to save, what size do you want the maps to be, um, <clears throat> samples per pixel, Are you doing? do you want it to be separate um, maps, or do you want it to be a multi-layered PSD? Uh, if you're doing maps like this definitely leave that off um, you can change the padding if you don't want padding or anything um, and then you can choose what you want to bake uh, I always use a uh, flip uh, Y just because yo V Jens what's up man uh, yeah, bro you're late to class man we're gonna um, we're gonna have to talk about that afterwards okay yeah dude <laughs> um, 
So I do my texturing in Substance Painter, which is what we're going to uh, jump into next. Um, so because I use Painter, we have to flip the Ys in the normal. <clears throat> so I'll flip the Y, which is totally fine uh, when you come back in here, because when you load your normal map, you can flip the Y back. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, so you can change the height information. Uh, I usually will put my curvature up to about 1.5, maybe 1.75, something like that. Yo, Screaming, what's up, man? <clears throat> um, you can change your ray count for your um, ambient occlusion. What's really awesome, I love, is floor occlusion. So basically, it pretends like this is sitting um, this distance from the floor and will bake occlusion based on uh, it sitting or having um, a vertical um, position <coughs> or having a floor underneath you. Uh, sure, screaming. Okay, so then once my bakes are ready, um, we'll take a couple look at uh, the bakes right now. Let's actually... So I did that for lenses uh, and for the body, basically. And um, I'll actually show you what the pieces look like. So we'll turn, let's turn the high off. Let's turn the low back on. Okay, we got the caps. <clears throat> and screws. Let's turn the high off and the low on. All right, so this is my actual bake. But yeah, I uh, can't do it right now, screaming. Um, I'm gonna uh, doing this, but if you uh, send it to me on Facebook, uh, I could probably take a look at it. Cool. Um. So yeah. Uh. So I have a drone body. Um. There is my material ID setup. Uh, I've got my normals. I've got um, ambient occlusion, all that fun stuff. So then now it's ready. Once I have those baked, now it's ready to uh, take into Substance Painter and have some real fun with it. All right, <clears throat> so let's jump into Substance Painter. All right, I'm going to close this. I don't need that. Yeah, man, no worries, brother. No worries. All right, let's open up Substance Painter. So Substance Painter is pretty taxing um so if uh we get some buffering at all <clears throat> in the stream that's why all right let's open up drone texturing 2 oh yeah god i love substance painter so good so damn good All right, so this is uh, what this bad boy looks like in Painter. So I always feel like it looks better in Painter um, than it does anywhere else. So you got to be really careful about, uh, especially in video game pipeline, um, what your final output is going to be, because that will determine um, what the look is going to be, not what it looks like here in Painter, right? So we got some nice um, things going on. So I'll, I'll go through exactly how I set up all my materials. Just wanted to give you guys a quick look at the full piece here. All right, with all the bakes and everything. Yeah. Okay, so um, because we have uh, two main texture sets, right? We have one for glass. <clears throat> Actually, for gla for the glass, uh, I just use the glass dirty uh, smart material that uh, comes with substance. <clears throat> so I just use that. It was just going to be basically a preview. I just wanted to get the basic idea of how it was all. Thanks, man. Yo, what's up, Swixed? How you doing, dude? 
All right, so the body. <clears throat> the body. is basically uh, just three textures, right? So I have this main uh, plasticky, like hard plastic, rubber style material, um, shiny material, and then a painted uh, metal. So usually we'll start with the base material. So I just want to make sure that like I, I get something that looks somewhat close to uh, the original concept, right? So looking at this, as the light falls off uh, into dark is where you see um, most of the texture, right? So it's like this really fine grain, uh, hard plastic type feel to it, right? Then we have a painted metal here, and then a shiny metal, and that's basically the, th the three materials that uh, that I'd be working with. Um, <clears throat> so I just want to make sure that uh, I got a good material here. This is a actually a leather material, which I tweaked uh, to make it look a little bit more plasticky. So now that I say that it's leather, you can start to see that. Oh uh, yeah, I guess so. Uh, it could be leather. It could be hard plastic. It could be whatever. All right. So I want to make sure that uh, I had that down first. So basically, I took and just made um, I'll take a folder, and then I was uh, for each location of texture, uh, I'll create a folder for it. So like for all the red paint, um, all the all the layers that go into uh, the red paint would be under the red paint um, <clears throat> folder with a black mask. Saying, oh, I only want it here. Yo, Tark, what's up, dude? Welcome back, brother. <clears throat> Alright. So I got, uh, I got the plastic down. And then we move into the paint. <laughs> He's a sponsor for the future, yeah. Um, so this is the paint. Uh, I started with just a um, damaged paint steel. And I think that is... Let's take a look. Yeah, just this guy right here. <clears throat> uh, I highly, highly, highly suggest uh, taking a look at uh, Algorithmic's new um, source website uh, where they have all kinds of <clears throat> materials and stuff for uh, for sale. We've got amazing, amazing materials on there. So, like, a lot of these I picked up from there. I don't remember which uh, is uh, packaged with... Uh, by default, and which was picked up from there. So uh, you have to excuse me on that. I'm fairly sure this is part of the um, <clears throat> uh, the original uh, set. Though. All right, let's pull that back up. Get that out of here. So then from there, um, just tweaked um, anything that I needed from there, uh, and then color selection. So basically, uh, create a black mask, and then, all right, so create a black mask, and then I'll come down here and do add color selection. And that would add this this color selection. So basically, I say, well, all right, I want to pick the color, and then look at that. Yo, Swick, thanks for the host, man. Um, there is the all-important, super, super, super duper important um, ID map that we, uh, that we created. <clears throat> There we go. Da, 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 da. The only thing is, I don't know how to get out of color selection mode once you hit pick color. I think you can do escape, but it doesn't really do it. So just hit material to go back to this. Anyways, we'll... Oh, I can just select out there. Okay, cool. That's good to know. All right, so then um, I basically will just use the color selection, and we'll go pick the three colors that I wanted for this particular material. Um, and then there you go, right? And then so I did the same thing for shiny metal. All right, I think I just went and picked um, steel scratched. <clears throat> so whichever one uh, feels best, right? And then under that, I uh, would just go in and tweak dirt and tweak the base, you know, um, Tweak, tweak all the uh, settings to look the way that I wanted it to look. All right, so then I went in. So this one is a little bit more interesting. Um, you can see all the different colors 
uh, for all the different picks. So this is where we ran into some of the problems where uh, when you bake the material ID from polypaint groups in ZBrush, you had some of the overlapping colors, right? So basically what you can do to get around that is you can add, um, you can add more than just one color selection, right? So <clears throat> if you look, You can add more than one color selection, or you can um, actually paint into the mask as well with a paint layer. So if you come up here and just do add paint, you can add a paint layer and actually paint right into the mask. So uh, that's super duper helpful. So some of the pieces, I forgot where I did. All right, we'll see it in the, um, the lenses material. Okay, so uh, that's basically the body. And then I took and made a whole uh, dust layer. So basically with the dust layer, I just created uh, a layer with color and roughness, grabbed a, a dust color, um, turned my roughness all the way, well, close to all the way up, and then just went in and painted. All right, I started with a, um, I don't need that one. I started with just a dirt to get like the base down. Um, and then I went in with another paint right in the um, in the mask. Just come in here and do add paint layer. And then I can go in and let's say I take um, a brush. Usually I'll go in with like a dirt one. And I'll just like paint in areas, right? Or paint out areas, right? So I can add more here and then pull that back. Dusty. All right, so that's what I did. So the um, the dirt layer uh, will get a nice start, and then we'll take uh, and paint in and out the rest of the stuff. <coughs> Got a little bit of a cough, guys. Sorry about that. All right. So that's how I went about um, doing that, and then I basically did the same thing for uh, the lenses material. So what's awesome is that you don't have to do this all again from scratch. You can just say, um, actually from the drone material, body material, you can take this whole thing. Yeah, wait for it to think for a second. All right, we take this whole layer and then just do copy layers. <laughs> Hopefully it's not that bad. We have to go to the hospital, uh, and then just uh, come in here and do. Um, where is it? Paste layers. All right, so that'll take that whole thing and paste it right in there. Um, of course, you'll have to go back in and change your color selection and stuff, um, but that's easy, right? So again, so I just have that same plastic here. I have the same uh, red paint, same shiny metal, and same dust. All right, so it makes sure that you have uh, consistent uh, settings across all of your uh, texture sets. And I tried to do some emissive stuff, but it didn't work, really work out too well. So that's why there's an emissive one there. <clears throat> so because this is so, you start to see some of the issues um, about uh, the fidelity um, and why I had to break up uh, the texture sets into two different ones. Because, okay, so you have to think about, so when you're doing um, uh, asset creation for video games, you have to think about what the output's going to be, right? First and foremost, is it a first-person shooter? Is it a third-person um, over-the-shoulder? Uh, is it um, uh, RTS, uh, where you're like super god mode, where you're all out? You know, is it isometric? Um, because that will determine the fidelity of the uh, maps and um, topology, right? So in this particular scenario, it would be for a uh, third-person open-world um, game, right? So once you determine that, that will determine how close you're going to get to see this thing, right? How much space of your screen is it going to take up, right? So if I'm looking at my full screen here, right, in a third person, this is probably one of the closest things that you're going to get to it, probably. Right, there's there's definitely a possibility you can get up real, real close, maybe like this, right, and your guy's standing over here, and right? maybe you just swing the camera over so you're kind of looking at it here. So 
this guy is taking up probably, what, two-thirds of the screen. So I need to make sure that at this level, um, he's going to look good, right? And then I also want to make sure that from far away, he looks good too, right? You've got enough um, differences in the color values uh, and material values, right? So we've got a light red and a dark color, right? And that that will um, establish the design from far away, right? So you always want to make sure that you're staying true to the design factor um, <clears throat> and uh, the, uh, you know, the gameplay, right? So I know from looking at this circle with like a little um, front end thing uh, with some light, lighter materials on the side, I know that's my drone, you know? So I always want to make sure that I can read that from far away, right? I can see the lenses. I know exactly what that thing is, right? So it's really, really important when you're doing video game asset um, creation to take those things into account. <clears throat> so and that's why I don't mind when you're up this close when things start breaking down because you're never really going to get this close to it in the game. And that's okay, right? Because you don't want to spend a bunch of extra um, uh, energy on uh, the engine uh, to be able to render at this level if you're never ever gonna see it, right? So I wanted to make sure that you could read this logo and what was going on there from about this far away or further, right? Cause I don't, so I don't mind that once you get in here, it starts kind of falling apart a little bit cause you're never, ever, ever, ever gonna see it. <clears throat> Same thing with this one. I wanna make sure that that reads from back here. So super, super um, important to keep those things in mind. Thanks, Swixt. <clears throat> um, yeah. Other things to uh, keep in mind, too, is um, being open for game dev options, which means that, um, you know, like, well, maybe I want to change the colors uh, in in-game. Right, so maybe I want this to guy to be blue. <clears throat> um, you know, or maybe I want uh, a different, you know, a different color here, or a different type of material, or I want to change the the tint to the um, to the metal, or what have you. Right, so you always want to be able to be open for those particular options, which is great because then I could just take this, um, I could take this mask and just do export mask to file. And then now you can take that into game and then just do a color tint right over it, right? What? So it's all these like little things to keep in mind um, to get the best um, looking model as well as the best functioning model. Because ultimately, you know, we're not gonna just be sitting here staring at it uh, in Painter. You know, it's gonna be in the game. Cool. Uh, so once I had everything all set up, uh, just basically went into export textures. <coughs> um, I did not export my glass material uh, because I knew I was going to use, ultimately, um, the lenses needed to have different uh, materials set to it so that you can assign a glass material uh, to just the lenses really quickly. So even though I didn't do anything, I knew that in engine this is going to need to be separate. Um, <laughs> thanks, Jacob. Yeah, man, knowledge bomb. Always, always happy to share, man. Always happy to share. <clears throat> it's and and that's another thing too is um uh, like what you were just saying, Alex is saying that um you know this part looks really, really cool, right? So when you're um looking at the model from the very beginning, right? When we we're looking at the model here, we want to we want to make sure to capture the things that make this thing awesome, right? So, right, the lens is like the ultimate focal point, right? And what makes it really high fidelity is like this really nice lettering here, right? And all these different um levels of lens values in here, right? So I want to make sure that I capture all of that because that's super, super important, right? The F-Tech, right? And, and this lens right here, 
Super, super, super important. Uh, and then probably this guy here, the nice little Phoenix Tech. Um, and then uh, the caps, right? This, this area right in here and probably right around here. Those are all my focal points. <clears throat> so I wanted to make sure that I captured those ones and they looked freaking awesome. Like this stuff down here, like you probably didn't even notice that there's all this stuff down here, right? Uh, so I don't have to worry about all that. So what I did in uh, Painter... I just baked. I I literally just baked all that in. All right, that's just a that's just a bake. So cuz you're never really going to see it down here, but the chance that, you know, maybe maybe we're like this, right? You can start to see that there's some things under there, right? So, oh yeah. So, let, yeah. Let's. Um, that's a good idea to. Ex uh, let's talk about uh, the overall logistics or the overall um, stats as we get back into um, Marmoset. So, uh, so when we get back into Marmoset, we'll do that. So, just do export textures, right? So, I didn't um, export the drone glass because I don't worry about that. Um, and then I just exported the base stuff, right? Base color, height. That I probably could do without height, um, but it was in there anyways. Uh, emissive, I was already playing around with it, so it was already in there. <clears throat> but AO, uh, your normal map, uh, this is the, your uh, uh, world space, a metallic rough, and base color, right? Those are the basic ones. Uh, it's there, Alex. The uh, ambient occlusion is there. So the other thing that you could do, too, is you can take... Um, so let's go... Let's go to the body material real quick. A lot of times, I didn't do it in this one, but a lot of times uh, what you could do is you could actually take the baked um, AO map and use it as a fill layer to add a little bit more um, depth to it. Uh, so like, uh, let's go to, let's just add a layer. Okay. And then in this layer, we're just going to do color. All right, and then we'll take the base color. All right, I'm going to go into my project and I'm going to grab my drone body AO and I'm just going to pull that right into base color and then we make sure that oh no, that's what we're going to do that's not how we're going to do it we're going to add a fill layer first right and in this fill layer we're going to drop the AO right into there all right, so you can you can add that to it, right? And then maybe we'll just do uh, like a multiply. So it adds a little bit, adds a little bit more. So you can add that in there like that. Um, and then you can change the um, the opacity if you don't want it that dark. So a lot of people will will throw that in there. Um, sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. Um, a lot of times if I'm uh, going to depend on the engine more for that shading, um, I'll probably not do it. Uh, but sometimes you can. Figure out, you know, if it looks better or not. Um, a lot of times you could do this for more stylized stuff too, right? And really, like, pump that up. Um, we'll really push... The stylized feel. <clears throat> so, uh, so we do export, export, right? Export drone, export that one <coughs> at 2K, um, and then I'll use um, probably if I'm not worried about opacity. Um, yeah, what's up, Skittles? Yeah, man, it's been a while. Uh, if I don't use opacity, I'll just do dilation uh, infinite. Because uh, I want to make sure that uh, from far away you're not going to have any of those uh, seams, seam issues. Okay, so take it back into here. Let's just open up this other scene again real quick. Nope, don't want to change. Okay. So one of the other things too is um, uh, the reason why I didn't use that uh, AO pass 
was because I knew I was going to be rendering with global uh, illumination. <clears throat> so I didn't want to... Why are you so slow? Okay, there we go. So I didn't want to um, overdo it too much. So in this particular one, um, I have global illumination on. Right? Global illumination on. That's off. That's on. So I didn't want things to get too dark. Still want to be able to read that stuff in there, but have this nice global illumination, right? You can see, like, the red bounce here, right? We're starting to pick up some red bounces in here, um, there. I meant all kinds of fun, awesome, amazing stuff, right? Uh, and then this guy was just uh, the glass simple. And then I changed the albedo uh, a little bit and changed some of the uh, reflectivity a little. What's up, Easyborn? How you doing, man? Cool. So, um, so we have the two materials, right? We have drone body, right? Uh, so here is the normal map, which is the Y's flipped. Uh, we have the roughness uh, in gloss. We have the albedo, which is the baked, right? And you can see the dilation here happening. Um, we've got my metalness. Which is this guy? We've got ambient occlusion there, and then a little trick that I do is um, I'll actually use the original curvature map uh, as a cavity map. So what that will do is it'll help pop those edges just a little bit more, right? It's just ever so slightly. It darkens some of the materials, um, and then you can turn the diffuse down or the specular down, change some of your levels here um, to uh, <coughs> make it do it just just right. So those kind of like final extra little touches there. But I, I so I like to use the curvature map uh, as a cavity map, um, and then from there uh, I just place a couple lights. Right, um, this is just super simple. I, it's like a two light setup. All right, I got one here and then one on the rim. And that's pretty much it. That's, you know, other than uh, playing with my render settings, um, using local reflections, high res shadows, front facing shadows, um, I don't use ambient inclusion much because it tends to add a little bit too much darkness into those recesses uh, if I'm using global illumination. All right, so I uh, use global illumination, secondary bounces, and then I'll just tweak the brightness um, to where I feel, and then. There you go. That's that's the gist of it, man. So uh, went through uh, the modeling phase, um, UVs setups, um, baking in Marmoset tool bag, um, texturing in Substance Painter, and uh, rendering in tool bag. And then of course they did a little bit of animation to it. Um, so if we look at this guy, let's look through, I guess I'll show you that real quick since I got a little bit of extra time. I think it's this one. Ooh, man, it's chugging. All right, let's, um, I'm gonna actually gonna kill Substance Painter here. This guy. Yeah, right, nom, 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 nom. All right. Um, let's see if that's a little bit better. There we go. So basically what I did, uh, for the keyframes, uh, this is pretty, it's a very, very simple, it can be, uh, complicated, but it can also be really simple, uh, setup. So basically what I did is I took this guy, right? It's simple. Look, it's super simple. Oh my God. <laughs> basically I just took this guy and said, um, all right, I, I want him to rotate, so I just rotated him um, in the transform. Uh, this one, yeah. So basically what I did is I said, okay, at, right, so this is my initial keyframe, so I hit keyframe uh, when I have transform selected on everything. Uh, and then I went to, you know, at two seconds, I want him to be here, so add another keyframe. 
Uh, at four seconds, I want to be here. Add another keyframe. Um, at six seconds here. At eight seconds here. And then back to ten seconds here. All right, so ten seconds to do one full turnaround. Um, and then what I did is I actually took um, the lenses. Lenses. And then I did a little bit of um, translation on the lenses, right? So I just rotated it out, rotated and moved it out, and then rotated and moved it back in. Super simple, right? And then for the end caps, I did uh, something similar, right? So I come in here, go to transform, and then so as soon as that ended on the timeline, just created a new um, a base keyframe here. And then just rotated it one way, keyframe, rotate it back, keyframe. And then there you go. That's how you get this. I also made sure just to um, keep my lights in the same exact position. I didn't want to move my lights because I had the um, lights set up pretty much right in the perfect area to highlight the right spots. All right, and then just as I rotate the model, you get some really nice highlights are right in the right areas. There you go. So I ended up rendering this uh, movie twice. Super easy. You render it, render it once like this, and then you come back into render. Uh, then you turn on wireframe, and then you render the whole thing again. And then you have it exactly in the same spot. One with regular and one with wireframe. And then you go into like Movie Maker, Microsoft Movie Maker or something. Uh, and you uh, throw those together to get, where is he, where is he, this guy. Uh, yeah, I think you can import animations. I haven't tried yet. So there you go. Beautiful. Very. I'm. I'm actually really happy with how it turned out. Um, super, super excited. Which means that um, I need to do something better next time. <laughs> if you're happy with your work at the end, uh, you need to get better. <laughs> so. Yeah, so there you go. That's that's the whole pipeline. Uh, but it all really hinges off of having a really great concept to start with, right? And uh, understanding um, where where to start, and then having a full um... <laughs> flips table. <laughs> uh, having a um... let's do repeat real quick. Just play this a couple of times. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it, man. Really, really appreciate it. Um, so it helps to, to know the full scope of the project, right? Have a, have a good concept to start from. Have a f um, an endpoint, uh, uh, a very, very clear endpoint, uh, because ultimately you want this thing to be functional, not just pretty, right? Um, so working within uh, the limitations of what your project scope is, and then just having fun, uh, making sure that you stay true to uh, the initial points that made the piece strong to begin with. Um, and uh, yeah, the rest is uh, work. Yeah, Bulgaroff. Yeah, Jerry. So Jerry Perkins, the um, the fine young uh, gentleman who uh, did this initial concept, is a really really awesome hard surface uh, modeler. So uh, if you guys don't know him, uh, I think he also goes by uh, Master Zeon One Thousand One. He's a very big Blender guy. Um, uh, so definitely check out his stuff. Uh, he's got a, a lot of a lot of amazing stuff, and uh, yeah, I think um, I think that's that's gonna be it. Uh, just really just wanted to cover the pipeline and show you guys uh, how I approached um, getting this uh, from initial concept to in game. Uh, and this replay will probably end up uh, on YouTube. So if you guys want to catch it again, if you didn't catch the beginning. 
um, you can always go back and um, take a look at the full process there. So I uh, highly encourage you to uh, take a look at Jerry Perkins. Uh, follow him. He's got some, a lot of awesome stuff. Um, and, uh, yeah, awesome. Thank you very much, guys, uh, for coming and hanging out. Um, had a lot of fun uh, showing you guys. Uh, and uh, we will see you guys. Any other f uh, actual final questions that um, that I can help you guys wrap some brains around? <clears throat> I'll have my coffee at this moment. Yes, Vichens, thank you very much. There's um, there's Jerry Perkins' uh, art station. Definitely check him out. Awesome stuff. Awesome, 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 awesome stuff. All right. It looks like I answered all the questions. Sweet. That means I was thorough. All right. All right, guys. Um... Well, check the replay if you missed any of this or if you want to go back and cover it again. Um, and uh, we will see you again very, very soon. Um, yeah. Definitely. All right, guys. Yeah, take it easy. Thank you for all the follows, guys. Thank you for the hosts. And uh, thank you for all the awesome questions. Love you, guys. We'll see you very soon. Peace.